Come on, put your hands together. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease for the devil is defeated we are blessed everybody say bless bless bless, 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 bless. everybody say bless bless bless, 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 bless. everybody say bless bless bless, 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 bless. everybody say bless bless, 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 bless. bless. Hey. We're blessed. We're blessed when we come and when, when we go. We, we cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty. But the see. devil is, but the devil is defeated. We are blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. If you know it, just help us sing. Shame, lay. God's gonna God's turn. Gonna turn it around. He's gonna work in your face. Yeah, if you believe, help us say it later. God's gonna turn it around. He's gonna work your face. Yeah, 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 yeah. Later. God's gonna turn it around. And around. And around. And around. He's gonna turn it. It's gonna work. Sickness and poverty, but the devil is. For the devil is the we, dead. we are. We're blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty, must for the devil. For the devil is defeated. We are. I'm gonna go back to the part more time. Late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work in your favor. If you believe it, help us say. Late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. Has it laid? God's gonna do it. It's gonna work. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, say later. God's gonna and around and around and around and around. It's gonna work for your good. It's gonna work for your good. Don't give up. Don't give up. And around and around. He's gonna turn it. Hey, he's gonna turn it. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, 
we're blessed when we come and when we go we cast out every stronghold sickness and poverty must cease for the devil is defeated we are blessed now let's bless him for blessing us Hallelujah. come on let's bless him for blessing us lord we thank you god for all that you do god for every way you made god for saving us for delivering us god we thank you come on let's just take about five seconds to give him the glory god we love you god we adore you there's nobody like you god god we lift you god we lift you god hallelujah hallelujah good to know that we're blessed and highly favored of God. Doesn't matter what comes our way, we are blessed. Because God keeps on doing great things for us. Amen. There's something I just want to read. And then I'm going to sing a verse of a song because never lost. It says, when people Bring up your past. Tell them Jesus dropped the charges. Don't judge me by my past. I don't live there anymore. Amen. You believe that today? Come on, give God a praise in the house today. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Miracles when you move, such an easy thing for you to do. Your hand is moving right now. You're still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus. And your voice is calling me out. And right now, I know you're able and my God, he never fails. You can do all things. You can do all things but fail. Cause you never lost the battle. No, you never lost the battle. And I know, I know. You never will. Miracles when you move. Such an easy thing for you to do. And your hand is moving right now. You're still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus. And your voice is calling me out. And right now, and I know you're able. And my God, he never fails. You can do all things. You can do all things but fail. You can do all things you can do all things cause you never lost the battle you never lost the battle you never lost the battle and I know you will you can do all things you can do all things but 
fail Cause you never lost the battle No, you never lost the battle And I know you never will You can do all things You can do all things but fail No, you never lost the battle no, you never lost a battle. And I know you never will. You can do all things. You can do all things but fail. No, you never lost a battle. No, you never lost a battle. No, you never lost a battle, and you never will. No, you never lost a battle. No, you never lost a battle. No, you never lost a battle, and you never will. You never lost a battle. You never lost a battle. You never lost a battle. No, you never will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. How do you know he never lost the battle? And if we keep on trusting and believing in his word, God will always come through in the nick of time. It's very vital to our Christian growth that we have faith in God and never doubt because he never lost the battle. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Won't you stand with me as we go into our scripture? I have a few scriptures we're going to read starting off in Genesis chapter 3. Amen. 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 Genesis chapter 3. Let's see. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Beginning in verse 1. It says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, as God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden God has said you shall not eat of it neither shall ye touch it lest ye die and the serpent said unto the woman ye shall not surely die for God does know that in the day ye eat thereof then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Amen, amen, amen. Then my next scripture is Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Let me go there myself in a second. Verse 36. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mark 8, 36 which reads and it says for what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul you may be seated father we thank you right now for your presence we thank you oh God for the songs that have been sung in this place the atmosphere has been set oh God for your your visitation to move in the atmosphere around us. We thank you, Lord God, that you remove the spectating spirit out of our hearts right now, God. Cause us to decrease, that you will increase. Father, purify our thoughts, our actions, that everything we do will line up with your word, O oh God, that you would have your God-like way to speak a rhema word from the Logos, a word that would transform, that would inspire, that would encourage, 
that will edify and build up every person to have ears to hear this word as the Spirit speaks unto the church. Forgive us for our sins, O God, knowingly and unknowingly. Father, wash us in the blood of the Lamb that we will, Father God, be clean in your presence. Besides, you already spoke the words to us that you are cleansed by the words which I have spoken unto you. We receive it now by faith and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Can you do me a favor? Look at your neighbor and ask them this question. Is your living in vain? Look at another neighbor. Turn to another neighbor. Ask them the same question. Is your living in vain? And as I was going through the scriptures this week, I was reminded of Luke chapter 12. Let me go to Luke chapter 12. That's another scripture that was in my spirit. Hallelujah. God really, when he talks to me, he begins to speak sometimes in mysteries that I sometimes ponder in my mind for a while, then I get a revelation. But that's how God does. That's the God we serve. He doesn't tell you everything at the same time. Sometimes he speaks in phrases or a sentence or a word. And it be just what you need to hear at that moment. Luke chapter 12, beginning verse 16. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns. And build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. Then it goes on. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So he, so he that lays up treasures for himself is not rich towards God. Isn't that something? For many years, we can toil, we can work, we can build our access. We do everything we want to do to live a satisfying life. But without God in the equation, God says, thou fool. This night, thy soul is required of thee. And the reason why I went to Genesis was I was in a conversation earlier during the week. And a friend of mine was going through a problem. She just went through a breakup in a marriage. And we got into a conversation about the covering. And as we began the dialogue and conversation, God began to speak to me concerning Adam's responsibility. All this is going to tie in together. Every scripture I just read is going to come together as a puzzle. Because in the garden, when God first created man, what did he do? He placed him in the garden to have dominion over all of his creation. In other words, over, over, over all God's access. He gave him one responsibility. That's to govern and rule over everything he created. But then God said, it's not good for man to be alone. So he made him help me, right? We know the scriptures. He made him help me, caused a deep sleep, fall upon Adam, took a rib out of him, created a woman, put him on his side. All right? So now he has another responsibility. And that responsibility is to cover his wife that God gave him. Right? 
Not only did he have that responsibility, but God spoke a word. Listen to me now. Many times we study the scriptures and we get a rhema word from God. It is our responsibility to cover the word God spoke to us. But here come old Slewfoot in the garden. God gave the responsibility. You can eat of every tree in the garden. Everything is at your disposal. But one tree that's in the midst of the garden, thou shalt not eat of it. So the enemy engages a conversation with Eve in chapter 3 and says, did not God say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? She said, no, he didn't say that. He said we shall not eat of the tree of good and evil and not touch it. God gave me something this morning. He says she added an extra twist to the word of God for our own personal conviction of sin. Ain't that something? We do the same thing. We know the scriptures. We know what God spoke to us, but we add an extra twist to satisfy our flesh. And when God is speaking to us, I heard what you said, God, but this one part I'm going to cherish over here, but the rest of it I'm going to discard because I'm going to fit myself over here to fit in what you just spoke to me. So then God took me, he says, what profit a man to gain, that means do everything you can to build a satisfying life for your flesh, to gain the whole world, to me all the possessions, all the money, all the treasures, all the stuff, the brand new houses, the brand new cars, all this stuff we want to get to build our flesh. And he says, but what profit you to get all this stuff? Just like the rich man. The reason I read that, because when God gave it to me, he said, this rich man, he had many goods, plentiful, he said. That means he had abundance. And he said, you know what? I don't have anywhere else to bestow my goods. So here's what I'll do. I got a great idea. Sometimes we get a, a flesh idea, not a God idea. The flesh idea says, this is what I can do. I can take all my stuff, you know, I can tear down the, the barns I have now and build some bigger barns. Then I can put all my possessions in this barn, right? So he had an idea, but it wasn't a God idea. So his idea says, you know what? Then I can sit back. He says, I can sit back. I can eat, drink, and be happy. We do it all the time in the house of God. We satisfy ourselves, but we leave God out the equation. When God is trying to get our attention, we say, God, I don't want to hear that God stuff right now. I want to do what my flesh wants to do. I want to have some alcohol. I want to indulge in it. I want to get some drugs. I want to go fornicate. I want to adulterate. I want to go, go lie. I want to do all this stuff. Why? Because it originates from the thought. The reason why God told me to teach about the mindset so much, because I had a warped mind. And I found out, in the midst of all my studying, it would profit you nothing if you don't have the Spirit of God inside of you. Because the Holy Spirit, when Jesus was about to depart from the disciples, he said, I'm going to give you another comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. He's going to come inside of you. When he comes in you, he's going to guide you. He's going to lead you. He's going to counsel you. He's going to instruct you. He's going to give you the Word of God and bring it back to your remembrance. But check this out. No deposit, no return. So a lot of times we're looking for a word from God, but we ain't studying God's word. A lot of times we're looking for God to move in our situation, but I'm not praying. 
I'd rather go to the pastor because he seemed to have a better connection with God. So I'll go to him, say, Pastor, I need you to pray for me. I ain't prayed for myself. I ain't fasted. I ain't sought God's face. I haven't done anything that God required of me. When God told the rich, said, this night, the soul is required of thee. Why? Because we all have a point in time where God going to call your name. When he calls your name, he's going to say, this night, your soul is required. What have you done with my son? What have you done with my son? I sent him to bring the word to you, to live inside of you as the word, but what did you do with my son? I gave you everything you need pertain to life and godliness. But that flesh kept getting in the way. Wake up, Joe. <laughs> that flesh keeps getting in the way because it don't want to hear the word. And when God tells us, hey, I'm checking you today. I, I saw what you did. I saw the thoughts in your mind before you done anything. See, God is so good. He know our thoughts before we even think a thought. And he says, but you know what? It's your responsibility. You know what? I got something this morning. I was, I was in prayer this morning. And, and God began to show me. When we go home, we cover ourselves, right? We cover ourselves with clothes. We get in the bed, some got blankets, some got quilts, some got comforters. Why? Because I want to cover myself to feel what? Comfortable. Why don't we allow the Holy Spirit to cover us to be comfortable? And when God began to think, began to think through me and speak to me, he said, we need to do the same thing. If we cover ourselves, then we need to cover ourselves with Jesus. Then when you get up in the morning, the first thing to come to my mind is the word of God. To give God the glory and the praise. The devil is a liar. He cannot have your covering until you give it to him. Many times we forfeit our covering because that flesh is so stubborn and rebellious to God. And God says, I'm trying to break you today. I'm trying to empower you today. I'm going to bring you to a higher place than me. But that flesh says, no, Lord, I ain't ready for that. The anointing, we talk about it all the time, it comes with your character. Your character is fashioned and shaped in the image of Jesus Christ. And when you give yourself to him, God says, now the anointing empowers you. It'll charge you up that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the anointing says, now you can stand still and see the salvation of God in hand because you've been covered in the presence of the Lord. I get excited about this word. Done too much to be quiet. I've been on attack for the last three months in my body. Throat going out, can't talk, can't sing. I said, the devil's still a liar. If I have to sing with a raggedy voice, I'm still going to sing. Because it's not about this. It's about him getting the glory. Because he said, there will be glory after this. Because we all are coming to a time in our lives where Christ is soon to come. And when he comes again, he says, the mortal will be changed to immortality. There's going to be an exchange factor. You're going to take off these old garments. You're going to put on this clothes of righteousness. You're going to be clothed in a long white robe. Because he said, I'm going to fill you with my presence. I'm going to change everything about you. Because it's all about Jesus being revealed in you and through you. The power of God. It's flowing in the atmosphere. And we're going to get out of ourselves and get in him. Allow him to get inside of us to come out of us. Glory to God. So when God calls your name, it's your living in vain. See, that's something. When I get up in the morning, I need to look in the mirror. And say, self is my living in vain. Because God is requiring everything to come out of me of excellency. Every day I strive for perfection. I strive to be like Jesus Christ. 
I put on a garment of praise for heaviness. I put on joy in the place of sorrow. I got a crown of righteousness on my head because I'm clothed in Jesus Christ. Glory to God. I told God a long time ago, I don't want you to catch me in my sin because you don't know the day nor the hour when he's coming back again. We can speculate. Folk can prophesy, prophesy lie trying to say he's coming on this day. He's coming on that day. Jesus said, Oh, they're going to say, oh, Lord, he's over there. Oh, Lord, he's over there. But no, he's in the kingdom. He's on the inside of you. And the kingdom being revealed. When Christ calls your name, he's going to say, come on up a little higher. I'm going to make you a ruler over many things. Because you've been faithful in the least of them. That's the God I serve. On the day he calls my name, will you be ready to meet the king? And when he said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. You look like Jesus. You talk like Jesus. You act like Jesus. But your life didn't line up like Jesus. Because you were a hypocrite. You are a liar and a whoremonger. You are a wolf in sheep clothing. And God's I'm going to expose your nakedness. On the day when Christ comes back again, he's going to strip you of yourself. He's going to strip you of what you pretend to be. He's going to reveal who you really are before his majesty. Hallelujah. Because he said, every man is going to stand before the beam of seat of Christ. That's the judgment seat of Christ. And when you stand on that day, I want to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. I want to hear him say, well done. Your living wasn't in vain. I want to hear him say, well done. Come take your seat in glory on high. Because I watched your struggle. I watched your suffering. I watched the pain and the agony. I saw everything people did to you. They scandalized your name. They ridiculed and mocked you. They called you everything but a child of God. But he'll say, but I was right there in the midst. I was drawing you closer. Closer to your promise. Because I am the king of kings. And the Lord of Lords. So it shall live in vain. It shall live in vain. It shall live in vain. You gotta ask yourself that question. Is my living in vain? Because I don't want my living to be in vain. And it's gonna require you, as a child of God, to allow the Holy Spirit to change your mindset. Because with a filthy, sinful mind, you will not. Inherit the kingdom of God. No way. No shape or fashion. You are not into the kingdom of God with a filthy mind. And God says today, I'm sending out a loud alarm to the house of God to wake up, 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 to wake up, to wake up, to wake up. And allow yourself to be changed from the world mentality to the mind of Christ. He's coming back again. Won't you stand all over the room? He's coming back again. He's coming back again. And when he comes, will you be ready when you call your name? Will you be ready when he call your name? Is your robe going to be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Or are you going to say, I don't know you? I don't know about you, but I'm expecting the king to come back. I'm expecting when he does, I'll be in that number. I want to be in that number when the glory train begins to rise up, pick up all of his children, and take you to glory. I want to be in that number when he says, come on home. Come on home. Now is time. For you to take your flight. I want to be in that number. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So many years I struggled with pornography. And God began to reveal to me how can you stand before my people with a filthy mindset 
and you always talk about, you always teach about the mind being transformed, but your mind is warped. We all got something in our lives. If we go and look into the deep treasure box, when God gave me that revelation, we all have a deep treasure box in our heart of the stuff and the junk we're hiding from everybody else from seeing. And God said, nope, I'm exposing it. Today, I'm exposing your iniquity. Today, I'm exposing your sinful mind. Today, I'm exposing your lifestyle because you can't hide behind closed doors forever. Because God said, I see everything behind the closed doors. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for your word right now, God. Don't let it fall upon deaf ears. But let every person that hears this word, God, will be convicted to want to change. As we look into the mirror of the word, the looking glass, and we behold our reflection in the mirror of the word. Let us see Jesus and not ourselves. Let us see the blood that paid the price for our sins and not ourselves. But help us to see Christ being revealed through us. Now, Lord, I thank you that you change our hearts right now, God. Change our attitudes. Change our lifestyles. By the power of the Holy Spirit, let the blood wash it away, God. Everything in us that's not like you, the filthy conversations, the cigarettes, the drugs, the alcohol, the depression, the anxiety, the stress, the worrying, all this stuff we hold on to, God. The sickness, because of our confession, God. Many are sick. And ask you to cleanse us now, God. And we thank you that we have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name, amen. I want everybody in this room to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me for my sins knowingly and unknowingly the secret sins the hidden sins forgive me now Lord come into my heart and wash me clean purify me with the washing of the word sanctify me by the Holy Spirit and change me by the power of your word in Jesus name Amen Hallelujah Come on and give God praise. Come on, I want you to point your hand this Jesus. way. Ooh, the energy. Ooh, Jesus. Ooh Hallelujah. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you give back every ounce of energy that he has poured unto your people today. Right now, Lord, touch him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Strengthen him in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He came up out of the jacket on us. Amen. Let's give God praise. <laughs> Look, we're about to be dismissed, but I, I thank and praise God for the word. Thank and praise God for our guests in here on today. We have any guests in here today? Raise your hand. Amen. We got a few guests in the house, and I thank and praise God for them. Amen. Hallelujah. Look, listen, uh, we got a few things coming up. Uh, the black party is going to be a big thing. I think we find out who all want to be a volunteer on that day. We can get them a staff shirt. So it can say staff. They'll be one helping out. You know, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Staff shirt. So anybody that want to help out will get a shirt. Amen. So if people do need help that come to the block party, they'll know who to go to. 
but they'll see that staff name on there, oh, you here? And they'll be able to get the help they need, amen. Because some people come, and they don't know who to talk to. They don't know who is who. But we're going to do it different this year. So everybody standing to their feet. I want to open the doors to the church. If you're not a member of Redeemed Faith Fellowship, you may stand. Everyone may stand. If you're not a member of Redeemed Faith Fellowship, you may come. If you want to become a member of Redeemed Faith Fellowship Church. Hallelujah. Man, you took off on that word. It was like that up, up and away. <laughs> God be praised. Hallelujah. God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We had an awesome service today. God really showed up and did some things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I'm believing God for somebody to get some important phone calls about miracles happening. Amen. Say some some great is about to happen this week, amen. And when when it happened to you, I want you to take full advantage of it. Don't play around with it. Take advantage of your blessing. Just indulge in it. Just let God know, God, I thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. And do me a favor. Do me a favor. Do me a favor this week. Help somebody. Help somebody. Somebody need help, and God's going to bless you to be able to help them. Amen. Help somebody. Amen. All hearts and minds in. And again, I want to thank God before I do close. I want to thank God for Joyce being back. She's been gone for a while. And, you know, and, and I know what a, I, her back problem was different from mine. You know, and how many of y'all have experienced back problems? I, I remember being at work with my back going out and having to work on my knees, putting packages, picking packages up and putting it on my knees. And then I get up and realize I couldn't take it down the ramp. It's too heavy. So going from six, seven stacks I would have on the cart, I had to put one stack at a time. And sometimes the customers would think that I'm doing that on purpose, but my back was gone. And I had a family to feed. Hallelujah. So I had to I keep moving. And sometimes we'll, we'll work through that back pain and it, 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 it hurt us. We don't know what damage we're doing to ourselves, but I know the back pain can be, my L5 is messed up. And every time that go bad, I'm taking baby steps. I'm walking sideways or whichever way it had me walking. I'm limping. I know how it is because when that nerve back up in your back, you walking upside down sometimes. But Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for throwing your weight around in this place today. We thank you for moving and setting a fire in our hearts and in our lives. God, we're getting ready to go back to our homes and start a new work week. We don't know the troubles and the dangers that we may encounter. But God, I realize that we have been saying this all along. As we go from this place, I want you to repeat after me. As I go from this place, but never from your presence, may you rest rule and abide in me until we all can meet again. Come on, give God praise. Awesome. Awesome. We're dismissed, amen. God, mighty man of God. It wasn't Charles.